Hey, I'm Jay Kumar, the Bass Blaster, and this is your Seafoam Top 5 of the Week in Bass Fishing, number one. All right, we're still counting down our top 10 baits of all time, tournament baits of all time. We're at number three, and the third best bait of all time is Zoom Worms. It could have kind of been Zoom everything, almost every soft plastic. They've been such an innovator and so many guys use them and win with them, but we had to go with worms. Trick worm, finesse worm, old monster, speed worm, you name it, Zoom's got worms and they catch them. Genius bait designer Ed Chambers started Zoom in 1977, making them in a barn because he wanted shapes he couldn't buy. He was a fisherman, and other people started buying them, and that was all she wrote. Way too many wins and high finishes on Zoom worms, which is why they're on this list, and number three on this list. I can't mention them all, but a couple that come to mind are Gerald Swindle's Angler of the Year wins. And then Brian Thrift winning the FLW Cup in 2019. He used a Zoom Worm among other baits. Runner up in this category is the Berkeley Power Worm. And before moving on, true story, when the Zoom folks were looking for a name for the Old Monster Worm, I was like, how about the Graboid? You know from that Tremors movie? Okay, I made that up, but we do need a Graboid Worm. Number two. Hack attack, wax em. All right, Greg Hackney is one of the best shallow water fishermen, flippers, whatever you want to say, ever to get into a bass boat. So I had to ask him about how he uses forward-facing sonar. First, he said he leaves it on all the time, even shallow, so he's not worried about it spooking fish. But he also said it's just a tool, and like all tools, it's not useful 100% of the time. He also cautioned younger anglers coming up with this technology not to rely on it too much in case it hurts them as a total angler, which I think means he's talking about instincts. Man, deeper tournaments at forward-facing sonar is a must, though. Number three. Forward-facing sonar, faster computers, quarks and whatnot. What does that mean for the future of fishing sonar? Well, one hint might be from this company called Coda Octopus that has some insane sonar for, I think, commercial saltwater use and for the military. One of the things that this sonar can do is track one fish. So instead of you looking at your sonar and seeing that one fish and tracking it with your eyes, where is it swimming, you can put a cursor on that one fish and the sonar will track it for you. <laughs> You wouldn't have to move your transducer at all, so is that useful? Yeah, if you're going to track one big fish and try and get that one to bite. Is it coming soon? I doubt it, but who knows? By the way, on its website, Coda Octopus says it has a sonar that shows things in the 4th, 5th, and 6th dimension. I'm like, what? I thought we can only see in 3 dimensions. Reminds me of that uh, Doctor Strange movie. Strange for sure, number four. Now, if you've been reading the Bass Blaster email for at least a couple years, you might remember that at the 2021 iCast show, I found this company that wanted to create a heads-up sonar display for fishermen that looks something like this. I wondered how that would happen. Augmented reality glasses or something? The only problem with that is how would you fish with those on or even stay in the boat? You don't want to get dizzy and fall out. Well, maybe they won't be needed after all. At the recent CES show or Consumer Electronics Show, computer and display company Asus teased what they're calling the spatial vision displays. These things track your eyeballs and create a no glasses required 3D image. Gotta admit that would take our electronics up a notch for sure. Will it happen? Is it real? Let's wait and see, man. Number five. Like it or not, the change to five fish on Major League Fishing's Bass Pro Tour is going to change the way the guys fish and their strategies. Kevin Van Dam and Mark Daniels Jr. or KVD and MDJ had a couple of interesting things to say about it this week. 
Kevin said the change is going to help those anglers who are patient, deliberate, committed, and thorough. The five fish mentality favors these qualities. Well, I guess that shoots down my theory that all us bass anglers have some form of ADD. Guys who fish this way will no longer be pushed out of their comfort zone by a numbers game breathing down their necks. Even if they just have two bass on the board with an hour to go in the day, they can stay true to their game and strategy. Very interesting and absolutely, that's how people do it. They just need five big bites. Here's what MDJ says. In the every fish format, you get in a situation where you had two bites at a place, but it's 40 minutes away, so there's no way you're running down there. Too much fishing time is wasted. In 40 minutes time, you just went from 10th to 25th on that score tracker. But now, a scenario like that is heavily considered. If I make a 40 minute run, I might not get a bite, but if I do, the reward is humongous. So we're going to see a lot more running and gunning on the Bass Pro Tour this year. I don't know, for some reason it feels like it's going to go from a tea party to like a bar brawl. I shut this one. Okay, maybe not. That's all I got for you this week. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Seafoam. Go to BassBlaster.com or .rocks to sign up for the Bass Blaster email. See you next week. God bless you.